We don't have a lot planned for today. We're going to take a pretty easy day. We thought we'd just go for a walk around a close by lake, but that would mean we'd have a quite a short vlog. So what I thought I would do is I'd introduce my Pelican case today. A lot of people have been asking me, what's it for? What do I carry in it? How much can it carry? And so on. So I thought I'd give you a bit of an introduction to it today. This is a Pelican 1510 case. And what's good about it is it's big enough to carry all my gear, but small enough that I can carry it as a carry on on the plane. Because the biggest issue is I'm worried about losing my gear when I check it in. Either the airline might lose it or damage it. This way, if I carry it on the plane with me, I can look after it and keep an eye on it at all times. Normally, this case is used as a storage case for my big lens, a Sigma 150 to 600, which is about this big, plus a camera on top of it, which fits it nice and snug snugly in here. I mostly use that as my on the water lens when I'm shooting yachting photography as it protects the lens from the elements. This case actually floats as well, not that I've ever dropped it in there, but I keep the spray and everything off it. When I'm not using it for that, I like to use it as my travel case. As you can see, it's quite padded in here. So it's got all these dividers in it, nice little foam on the top. You can actually remove this foam if you wanted to and put a set of pockets up here but I like to leave the phone in, phone in here. Now, this isn't my everyday case. Uh, for everyday use, I use my backpack, my camera backpack, that I carry my camera around. This is mostly used for transporting it and protecting the gear uh, while I'm on the plane or just leaving it around the house. So normally I'll take all the gear out, put it in the backpack for daily use. But this is designed to carry all my camera gear, specifically the camera. Not so much my video camera gear, like the Osmo, uh, although I do use this for my GoPro. I haven't tried to see if I can fit a, the drone in here. I'm not sure it'd be big enough because the drone is quite tall and this isn't as deep as it looks. So really quickly, I'll give you a quick introduction to what I have in here. We'll start off on this side. Now on this side, I've got all my camera accessories. So I've got a hard drive in here, which is a lacy rugged hard drive. It's really good for backing up all my video and all my photos. And I've got a protective case on it. Can't have enough protection. Also in here, I've got Invalometer, spare uh, len back lens cover and camera cover, Ziploc bag, you never know when you might need one, if it rains or you need to protect some batteries or something, always useful. And also fit a couple extension tubes in here. So I'm using the Kenko 20mm and 12mm extension tubes. They're just nice if you want to do some macro every now and then. And I keep those in this little pouch. Second compartment back here is where I keep my batteries and blowers. Now the reason I keep them on this side of the case is that's where the wheels are. So these things are probably the lowest value in the case and my lenses and camera keep up. So this is where most of the shock would have of rolling over bumps and whatnot. So in here, blower, cleaning kit that's got a couple wipes and some lens spray, battery charger, and I keep my spare batteries in this little pouch. This was originally a lens pouch but I thought it's perfect for using my, keeping my batteries in there. Normally you can just throw this stuff back in there. It's quite good. Next up, this is my filter pouch. In here I've got a polarizer, got a 10 stop neutral density filter, and one of the Koken graduated neutral density filters. So this is my go-to pack for landscape equipment. My camera normally stays in this compartment here, but right now I've got it filming, so it's not in there. Normally when my camera is in here, I'm keeping my 40mm Canon Pancake lens on it. It actually fits with the lens on quite nice and snugly in there. And the 1635 stays in here. I've also got the 70-200 f4, non-IS though, in here. The main reason I go with this over the 2.8 is when I'm traveling, I like to travel light. This is the lightest of them all. Just as sharp, if not sharper, than the f2.8, I find, when you're shooting at f8 or f4 even. I didn't go for the IS one in the end, pretty much just because of the money. It's, it was a few hundred dollars cheaper, and I thought a lot of the time I'm gonna either be shooting at really high shutter speeds or on a tripod. So I couldn't really justify the IS. For those of you who don't know what IS is, it stands for internal stabilization or image stabilization on some cameras. And that just has an inbuilt motor in here that keeps the lens elements steady as you're shooting. Over here, I've got these two pouches, and this is actually where I keep my GoPro gear. And I've run two GoPros, I've run my Hero 3 Black and the Hero 4 Session and different equipment for different ones. The Hero 3 I normally use for time lapses 
or long videos. So I keep the equipment in here. It's got a suction cup, uh, time lapse timer. This is an IKEA timer. Bunch of uh, mounts and whatnot, and I keep that in here. And the session one, which is more hands on, things like straps, spare mounts, and whatnot. Oops. And I like to keep them color coordinated. So green for the Hero 3, red for the Hero 4. This does say Osmo on it right now. I've, I've swapped the bags around. I've got another bag like this just for the Hero 3. Other than that, that's, that's really about it. So it doesn't carry a lot of gear, mostly because it's just got so much padding and protection. But for what it does carry, or what I need to carry, it's perfect. When I, when I travel, I like to travel with just three lenses. I travel with my 16 and 35, that's my big landscape lens for those wide angle shots. I've got my 40 millimeter pancake lens, f2.8. And this is my carry around, walk around lens. If I'm not really sure if I'm gonna be taking photos in a day, I'll just pop this on because it's so much lighter. And it's a brilliant lens. It's really sharp, really good autofocus. I think everyone needs one of these. And of course, just for a bit of versatility, I've got my 70 to 200. So I really have covered most of the range with these lenses, and it makes life pretty easy not having to lug on a lug around. It makes life easy not having to lug around a huge number of lenses to carry around. And most of this can fit into my camera backpack if necessary as well. The good thing about the Pelican case as well is when you lock it up, it's got a dual latch system. So one, two to open up, same to close it, which makes sure it's really secure. Also. You can fit a regular padlock in here and here. It just makes life really easy because you know your gear is going to be safe. If you put it down for a moment, someone's probably not going to be able to get into it quickly and walk off with your, with your stuff. It's really good for a travel case. It's got an extendable handle here and it's on wheels. So it's just like any rolling suitcase, but it protects your gear. It is a little bit on the heavier side. The case alone weighs about five to seven kilos, depending on what you've got inside in terms of the padding and all that. And then when you add in your gear, you're closer to 10, 11 kilos. So maybe on the upper limit of your flight carry-on case. So if you're planning on using this as your carry-on, definitely check with your airline guidelines. Sometimes the limit might be seven, sometimes it might be 10. When we flew over here on Air Canada, I really didn't have any issues. They didn't even ask about it. It just went straight through. So if you're gonna be carrying a lot of camera gear with you, I highly recommend this case. Back in Victoria today, we're going to have a quiet day, uh, it feel, feels like we've been on the go for the last three or four days without much break. So we're going to take it easy, do some stuff around the house, do some laundry, but we're not going to stay at home all day. So what we're going to do is we're going to head over to this place called Swan Lake Nature Sanctuary near where my uncle lives. Uh, we're staying with my uncle Conrad for the next few days while we're in Victoria. And this, this nature sanctuary is quite nice because it's right on this really lovely lake. So we'll give that a go. She's cool. I haven't held a snake in years. She's Australian, so this is not before. Oh, totally. <laughs> No, this, is like like, the, this is like this is like is he gonna bite me <laughs> she's like if it's not venomous it's not fun yeah <laughs> is that a constrictor this is a ball python oh he wants mm -hmm. to go places yeah definitely he's been out for a while so he's feeling pretty awake Welcome to the Victoria Duck Races. And here we go. <laughs> On the way, coming through. Going fast, 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 fast. More coming through, more coming through. It's a dead heat. They all seem pretty good. Who's gonna win, Thea? Thea, who do you think's gonna win? Uh, oh, this one guy's up in front. Oh, what's the finish line? I don't know. <laughs> oh, they're coming in close. Oh, he looks, he's got distracted. Oh no, he's back in the lead, he's back in the lead, back in the lead. 
I think he's a solid winner. I will of you do. Okay. okay. I'll have one too. But this one is really unripe. What about that one? No, 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 no. These are raspberries. These aren't blackberries. Those are raspberries. Come on. Okay. Come on. Cheers. Go for it. Do it. Come on, bite. Bite, bite, bite. Super sour, isn't it? It's like one of the most sour things I've tasted. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know what that tastes like? What? I know this tastes well from when I was a kid. It tastes like regret. <laughs> so when I was, when I was like five, uh, we got, come here to Canada and there's be the blackberry bushes and blackberries, I mean, they start off green when they first grow, then they turn like a bright red, then start to go black and then when they're ripe, they go really dark black. Right. And of course, five-year-old Luke had raspberries before and you think, oh, this must be a raspberry even though I know it's a blackberry bush. <laughs> so I would eat it and it would be so sour, like crazy sour. And of course, three weeks later, I'd see a really red blackberry and guess what I would do? Would you get, eat it again? <laughs> eat just it again. eat everything. No, I just, in my mind is like, that's a blackberry bush. Blackberries are black. But it's red, therefore it must be a raspberry. <laughs> Yummy. Eat it. No, no, no. That that was actually a blackberry. <laughs> Whoops. And yeah. <laughs> it, it happened more than once. A bit of a bowl. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so those ones at the bottom, because the gnomes can't reach high, the ones at the bottom are for the Picking raspberries for dessert tonight. Yummy, yummy. And if I don't do that, <laughs> 